how do you negotiate for a salary? Give us a prime example of knowing your value, mm. right? And understanding the market. Okay. I'll just give you a simple, you know, arithmetic uh, example. When you start, when, when somebody is hiring you from another platform, it's they've already understood who you are and they, have, they, they attach a value <clears throat> onto you. Okay. By the time we're leaving TV and going on to radio, they have already looked at numbers. They have already looked at these guys uh, can make good numbers on radio. Therefore, your conversation mm -hmm. ceases to be about your talent. Mm -hmm. Your conversation begins to be towards the service. And most of us confuse uh, that just because I'm talented, then I will just sell. It's beyond just the talent. Now, the negotiation now begins to be, yes, you're calling us for the radio gig. What are you looking at as the radio manager mm -hmm. or the radio owner? Mm -hmm. What are you looking as a turnover mm -hmm. with our involvement? Ah. With me coming on board, how much are you likely to make on me, with me on breakfast? Mm -hmm. So if you're, making, if you're anticipating to make 300,000, then I think my contribution is a third. So I will take third, a third of that. So then you go into a space where you co-create the relationship. You go into a place where you're almost an owner of the product, okay, or the service. And then you start negoti negotiating on the details that we call copyright. And, and copyright, when it comes to the product, the, the artistry in you, that is your copyright. Then what, what does the radio owner have? He has the airing rights. Now, that is, when you start now having that negotiation within those frameworks, it ceases to be about your talent. It's not because I'm funny that I'm here. You're here to make money. And if you're to make money, how much money are we looking at making? So that I can be part of the success story. I may not take your 90%, I'll take 30%. And you, you keep the 70%. Really? <clears throat> no, it's, it's, as I said, it's, it's a science. You negotiate on value. Yes. Yeah. And, and also, as you negotiate on value, you've got to understand that uh, you, you, you have a time, a time limit. Time limit. Yes, uh, you, you're, you're, not, you're not infinite because you inspire other young people who are coming onto the market doing mm. what you're doing because mm. it makes money. Mm. <clears throat> Have you seen that kiosk in your neighborhood mm. where mm. Mama Jemima started yes. selling tomatoes and tomatoes were doing so well and then King's mother also, because the tomatoes are selling, mm. she also brought tomatoes. Yes, because yes. they are selling, mm -hmm. and 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 somebody else felt if these guys are making money from tomatoes, let me also get tomatoes because it's a selling product. With mm -hmm. time, what happens? <clears throat> the price mm -hmm. goes down. Yes. There's oversupply, mm -hmm. so the the demand is the demand is is the guys are spoiled for choice. So therefore, you start competing on price. You drop your price so that you are competitive, so that you can sell quantity your neighbor drops it down further. And that is, that is what happens to us in the entertainment industry, where you as a comedian who's upcoming, you say, I can come and do the same thing at 40,000 that Walter is charging 200,000. Mm. Well, they will take you for 40,000 because they, they are looking at 250 and 40,000, they are saving a whole 140, so why would they take Walter? Yeah. But imagine a situation where you came and sat down with Walter and said, listen, Walter, I want to go under your wing. I want to go under your staple. I want to go under your, <clears throat> I want to go under your company so that you negotiate and I benefit from the group rate. Therefore, it's my business that is already stable and I will tell my guys, listen, mm -hmm. here is, here is a king. King is as good as me. So, but because he's a new kid in the block, don't give him 250, give him 200. Now that, I start you in a level where you can sustain. The challenge with that thing of wanting to undercut in the market so that you can go in, mm -hmm. people will associate you with that 
prize for the rest of your life. So you get more value from apprenticeship? Yes. In all industries? Than breaking away. Wow. And were you, were you ever, were you, okay, because mm-hmm. industry was so key in your time. Mm. <laughs> uh, so for you to get to a place where you have to split the, the, the fractions in terms of uh, the, the business gets a fifth, mm. uh, I, we get a fifth uh, amongst ourselves, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you arrive at this, did you ever fight? Like, fight for the money, but then you need each other, you have to work together. Ama, how do you arrive at that? <clears throat> you, you, when you start as a group, you are driven by passion, <clears throat> okay? Yeah. You're driven by what you do. And you like each other for what you do. And you can do anything. You can, you can even do the show for free because you like what you're doing. Mm-hmm. But then when the money checks in, you realize, uh, actually, we are making some money out of this. Yes. If your systems and processes are not put in checks, mm. that's when groups begin to f- fall apart because you've not factored in <clears throat> Guys, we are starting this as a passion. Someday, what if it becomes successful? And so that introduces the value of tomorrow, where even as you negotiate, you're not looking at the ratings of today. You're talking about if we come in onto your platform, today you have 2 million viewers. If we come onto your platform with our 1 million, then that makes it 3 million. So, which means we need to look at the value of 3 million, not at the 2 million that we are, or mm-hmm. not at the 1 million that I am. Yes. So, so, at that point, we were privileged to have a head basic education that teaches you discipline, that teaches you decorum, that teaches you, you know, uh, you, need, you need to coexist. This guy is good and I'm good, and if we partner together, we can be better. Now, that's where the education now comes in handy because then you have, <clears throat> you have exposure. Mm. You're not acting out of foolishness okay. or out of passion. Okay. So when we understand that tomorrow it's likely to get better, then we put systems in place that protect us for tomorrow. Nice. Yeah. Uh, you, <clears throat> there's a very strong statement you say there, when the money starts to check in. Mm. I'd like us to go into when <clears throat> the money starts to check in. Yeah. But uh, come on, come on, you felt it. Mm. But then... Mm. Uh, Playing uh, President Moy then was risky. Mm-hmm. How did you know it's safe to come out as an imitation of the president? Uh, I would call that foolish and innocent courage. Uh, we didn't think about it. You didn't? That one, we didn't think about it. No one can lie to you that we thought about it and we said, now it's safe to come out. No. I think we were just foolish. We were passionate about what we did and we just did it. And the coincidences of life that yes. you would play Moi, <clears throat> mm. Moi goes out, yeah. then um, Kibaki, uh, Kibaki comes, comes in, in and you have Tony. Yes, and, and we had Kibaki. Uru Kenyatta. And if we were still on, we would have uh, William Ruto. And later on, probably people will be acting about me. Yeah. <laughs> well played, well played. <laughs> when the money starts to check in, yes. <clears throat> did you guys feel the money coming? And were you ever overwhelmed by money? Because there was a place... When I say monopoly, I mean monopoly. Yes. Uh, the systems that we put in place, we were lucky, as we said, and that is a knowledge that we are sharing so that those who are, you know, going into this space can start to pick those lessons so that in life, we don't have all the time to learn by ourselves. Mm-hmm. We learn from others. Mm-hmm. So there are mistakes that we made <clears throat> when we were coming up. There are lessons that we quickly learned. One of the things I can tell you, and I think uh, this, I, I give it to our Kikuyu brothers. Uh, I, I think when it came to Mambo na Mbeja, I think we left it to Tony in our group. Mm. Okay, when he was older than us, he okay. had been earning before us. So we naturally believed that he could manage the money more than we do. Oh, he so can. Tony remained our accountant and our guy who deals with money. Mm -hmm. I remained the guy who generates the money. KJ remains the guy who checks the product and the service. That's how we split ourselves into roles. The difference between the generator and the person who accounts for the money. Yes, yeah. You can't be everything. And that is when we understood those roles, it made it very easy for us to transition to any level. There was no fight about money. We knew no matter how much I negotiated, I brought it to the table, Tony would do the maths. Tony would do their locations. 
uh, KJ and I and everyone else will just be re recipients of the decisions that Tony made, financial decisions that he made. But <clears throat> were you ever shocked by money? Uh, yes. Our first amount that we got. The first amount? The first got. amount that we got. How much was it? 40,000 shillings. Ah, Gwenda. Yes. <laughs> Why would 40,000 shock you? To ligawa na yo pesa kakadi. Yeah. That was in 1998. 40,000? Yeah, 40,000. Na tulikuwa six in the group. 40K. So 40K cash and it's new notes. And so we had to distribute it like cards. How? Zilikuwa zinakata kuisha. I yes, please just for context. Think please about five hundreds, okay, or forty thousand. How many notes are those? Okay, wow. and then think about you have to make sure that everybody gets yes. an equal share. So you, you just have to do mathematics. No, you you distribute it until the last two. Kilam tuwa pata desi. Yes, yes. Na ile da baki amujo ni ula meshik. <clears throat> and how, how to, to give context, yes. what could you do with mm. 40,000 in 1998? A lot. Uh, for those of us who, who stay in Rai, or for those of us who stay in Raqqa, in 1998, for those of us who would stay in the outskirts in Rongai when it was uh, a forest and it was a forest, it was animal park and everything else. Uh, 40 by 80 was going for 15,000 shillings on a good day. So what wouldn't you do with 40,000 shillings? 